Here in Stockholm, I also had the chance uh, to meet with uh, Foreign Minister Kaleva from Ukraine and Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, from Russia. Uh, as I said yesterday in Riga, uh, as well as in my meetings today, the United States uh, and our allies and partners are deeply concerned by evidence that Russia has made plans for significant aggressive moves against Ukraine, including efforts to destabilize Ukraine from within uh, and large-scale military operations. We've seen this playbook before in 2014, when Russia last invaded Ukraine. Despite uncertainty about intentions and timing, we must and we will prepare for all contingencies while working to see to it that Russia reverses course. We also affirm that despite a massive Russian disinformation campaign, Ukraine is in no way posing a threat to Russia or seeking a confrontation that would justify a Russian military intervention. The only threat uh, is that of renewed Russian aggression toward Ukraine. In my meeting with Foreign Minister Lavrov, I made very clear uh, our deep concerns and our resolve to hold Russia responsible for its actions, including our commitment to work with European allies to impose severe costs and consequences on Russia if it takes further aggressive action against Ukraine. There'll be a follow-up uh, next year and in between a lot of work that's going to be done, and countries will be coming to this summit. Let's get the Uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov and I had candid exchanges on our different perspectives. We agreed to report those back to our presidents, uh, who may have the opportunity to speak directly uh, in the near future. It's now on Russia to de-escalate the current tensions by reversing the recent troop buildup, returning forces to normal peacetime positions, and refraining from further intimidation and attempts to destabilize Ukraine. We're watching this situation very closely. We're in close contact and coordination with our allies. Uh, as I conveyed again to Foreign Minister Kaleva today, uh, the United States remains unwavering in our support for Ukraine's territorial integrity, its sovereignty, its independence. We discussed Ukraine's commitment to implementing the Minsk agreements, which we believe represent the best avenue for a diplomatic resolution to this crisis, uh, potential crisis. I think uh, in the very near future, the next uh, day or so, we'll be in a position to judge uh, whether Iran actually intends uh, now to engage um, in good faith. Uh, I have to tell you, recent moves, recent rhetoric um, don't give us uh, a lot of cause for, um, uh, for optimism. Uh, but uh, even though the hour is getting very late, it is not too late for Iran to reverse course and engage meaningfully uh, in an effort to return to mutual compliance with the JCPOA. Um, what Iran can't do is sustain uh, the status quo of building their nuclear program while dragging their feet on talks. That, um, that will not happen. That's also not uh, our view alone. It's very clearly the view of uh, our European partners. I have to say I had a, a good conversation as well uh, with Foreign Minister Lavrov about this. Uh, I think uh, Russia shares our basic perspective uh, on this. Uh, and we'll see what happens uh, over the next uh, couple of days. But it is up to Iran to demonstrate and to demonstrate quickly. Don't you want to tighten the bolt on that? No, I, I broke my feet earlier today.